cyclic group of order n now there is a reason for using this d here the article d it's because it can be shown that any two cyclic groups of order n are actually similar in that sense that we discussed in the first video in part one now there is a geometric realization of this group and that will uh, tell you why exactly two uh, cyclic groups are of order n are similar in that sense and that geometric <coughs> thing can be uh, thought of in this way so we start like this let so n is still a positive integer let rho n denote the operation of rotating the xy plane about the z axis or instead of uh, considering the xy plane we can at once consider the unit circle on the xy plane okay that will be better rotating the unit circle centered at the origin origin about about its center we can say instead of um, mentioning the z axis the unit circle centered at the origin about its center by an angle two pi by n radians counterclockwise. Okay, so what exactly are we saying here? You see, you have the a circle whose center is at the origin. So that means we have the xy plane and there are the coordinate axes. Okay, my freehand drawing is very bad. So excuse me for that. So this is the center of the circle and the radius is supposed to be 1. That means these points are respectively 1, 0. This is the x-axis, positive side of the x-axis. This is the positive side of the y-axis. This is 0, 1. This is minus 1, 0. And this is minus 1, minus 1. Okay. So what we are what is rho n rho n is the operation of rotating the unit circle like this in the anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise direction about this center and by an angle 2 pi by n radians so you know from your uh, trigonometry courses that rotation by an angle 2 pi radians is one complete rotation so it's a part of that that will depend on n the higher the value of n the smaller the angle will become for example if we have say 2 pi divided by 6 if n happens to be 6 then this becomes pi by 3 radians or 
in terms of degrees it is 60 degrees so and a rotation in the counterclockwise direction by an angle 60 degree in that case it will be okay now since we are uh, not we have not uh, treated geometry axiomatically so we are going to rely on our intuition uh, about these things what do you think what happens when we make such a rotation let us give this a name also. Let us call this S. This unit circle is S. What happens to S? Clearly, you can see that S does not appear to change. No matter what, what the angle of rotation is, since we are making the rotation about this point, so if someone blindfolds me, and makes that rotation and then removes my blindfold I will not be able to tell a difference uh, between the previous position of the circle and the current position because it looks the same so whenever you have an operation that makes a geometric figure looks the look the same then such an operation is known as a symmetry of that geometric figure in this case rho n is a symmetry of the circle but actually rho n is a symmetry of something else also it is a symmetry of an n-sided regular polygon that is inscribed inside this circle and that has one of its vertices here at this point okay but, uh, by the way that is okay but the thing is, do you not feel that this rho n is a one-to-one -one mapping of S onto itself? That is, rho n is after all a bijection whose domain is S and range is also S. You see, when we rotate, distinct points are mapped onto distinct points the angle of rotation does not matter also any point on the circle comes from that rotation from some point you just uh, look at the point that is at a distance of 2 pi by n radians along the <coughs> circular arc that is in the clockwise direction if we perform the rotation then that point will be mapped onto this point so the function is onto keep in mind that these arguments that we are saying are not rigorous because we are not treating geometry axiomatically so our intuition tells us that this is the case so we will use geometric intuition to uh, make some more claims about this situation have we written it correctly let rho n denote the operation of rotating the unit circle s centered at the origin about its center by an angle of 2 pi by n radians counterclockwise yes our geometric intuition tells us that the following are true rho n is first of all a bijection on s okay so that is one thing then if we perform rho n n times then that is equal to identity the identity mapping uh, in the context of this circle is doing nothing or in other words by rotating the circle uh, counterclockwise by an angle of zero radians that will not change anything so it keeps every point to itself and 
it's also equal to this okay by the way what is the meaning of rho n to the power n in this context you see since we have identified rho n as an element of this group a s so these are integral powers now this by definition is equal to identity this however is e equal to identity that we find from our geometric intuition if you apply rho n n times for example if you say when n was 6 we found that this rho n or rho 6 turns out to be the counterclockwise rotation by 60 degrees if you perform it uh, 60 degrees or 30 degrees in it is 60 degrees no? am i missing something 2 pi by 6 is equal to 2 pi or pi by 3 yes this is equal to 60 degrees okay oh yes no yeah this is correct what i was thinking was wrong so in that case i have the rotation by an angle 60 degree now if i perform that rotation six times then 6 times 60 degree becomes 360 degree so i have full rotation so everything will come back to its own place in other words that full rotation has the same effect as doing nothing so that's why i have rho to the power n is equal to e keep in mind again i am saying that this part although we have proved everything rigorously here but whatever we are doing here is not rigorous it, it is coming just from our crude geometric uh, intuition so this is one thing uh, what else i wanted to say mm. oh yes and the operations are all distinct that also you can see by taking some special value of n no two of these operations will be the same for example if for n equal to 6 if i uh, consider rho square then that is actually uh, rotation by an angle of 120 degree that is something which is different from rotation by an angle of 60 degrees. So you can see that all such operations starting from rho to the power 0, I mean uh, rho 6 to the power 0 to rho 6 to the power 5, are they are all distinct. Furthermore, or moreover, yeah, this is the most important part. Rho n to the power i dot rho n to the power j is equal to rho n to the power i plus j if i plus j is less than or equal to n and rho n to the power i plus j minus n if i plus j is greater than n now i admit that this takes a lot of effort to see from intuition that this is the case but you can see you take some small value of n and you see that whatever you do you go through all the possible products you will see that this is the case for all rho n to the power i from our row n to the power j belonging to or belonging to what with i and j lying between 0 and n 
let me write that in short like this don't think that this is two inequalities these are one of them is this and the other is this actually this says that both i and j are lie between 0 and n okay now comes the important point without being too technical we can say that the groups one of them is our g under the operation dot that we have already seen above namely the cyclic group of degree n and similar similar in that sense where the role played by a to the power 1 is here it is being played by rho n to the power 1 or rho n you see that it's like a like this is a mirror on one side of the mirror you have this abstract group where there are some abstract symbols and an abstract operation on the other side of the mirror you have a concrete group where the symbols mean something they mean operations on some geometric object or they are in the language that i said um, they, they are actually symmetries of the geometric object. They also form a group on this side of the mirror under the concrete operation of composition of mapping. And these two groups are similar in the sense that whatever is happening in one group will happen in the other group provided you know what the images of those elements or the operations are in that abstract group so this the similarity is substantiated by making that relationship between those images which ultimately will turn out to be the concept of an isomorphism of groups so because these groups are similar that's why we say the cyclic group of order n because it this also behaves like a cyclic group of order n it's like you, someone decided to write rho n in place of a everything else is same okay so we will see more on these uh, similarities later on in our study of group theory now we move on to example five